Hiya, girls. We are Barney and Lukey, and we are the hot young visionaries behind Truffle Pig Wigs. And this is Cliffhangers, the unofficial, unrequested, and unhinged RuPaul's Drag Race recap show. The views and opinions expressed on Cliffhangers are from a couple of women who just love drag and have zero real business judging it. If you are not a fan of red hot acidic critique, turn back now. He's got burger peen. It's Barney. Sorry. I'm going to need a breakdown. Booger pain. It rhymes with super queen, which also rhymes with super tease-ish. And I wrote this at eight in the morning on Sunday after four hours sleep. Um, Sue would, me. Well, exactly. Were illegal, legal... Uh, it means your dick's case. ugly. you got booger pain. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought it was like a penis that people wipe boogers on. Well, I don't know which is worse. All of the above. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Who's the booger now, bitch? <laughs> And fresh from Faden Boys, it's Ryland's dealer. It's Lukey Luck. What's, what's Faden Boys? I just was trying to think of somewhere in Essex, but like somewhere in shit Essex. Actually, Faden Boys is quite nice. It's like countryside. Shut the fuck up. Oh, wow. You're talking too much. Feels very anti I've only got one thing to say to you. What is that? Let me tell you something, you ugly bitch. <laughs> Can we get into how somehow our favourite Miss Angeria Paris Van Michaels makes ugly into like a seven syllable word? She's like, oh. Oh. <laughs> obsessed. 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 Um, let's do some drags then, I guess. Well, what have we been up to? Wow. We had a lovely night out at uh, Bethel Green Working Men's Club Sit on a Saturday. Away. Y2K party. Hosted by our angel Dolly Trolley. Dolly Trolley was there. Also, shout out Bethel Green Working Men's Club if you've never been... It's a lovely queer haven. Yeah. She's been rocking for a long time. Three different size rooms you could rent out if you wanted. Get into it. Three? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, the greatest. Bethel Green Met is like the most unpretentious, just little little shack. And I bought everything from the bagel shop on Brick Lane on my way no, home. No, you didn't. What did you get? I got a, apparently it's small challah bread, which was literally like bigger than my head. I've got a sandwich Sick. with it today. Got a couple of cream cheese bagels, got an Eccles cake, got oh, a carrot God. cake slice. Were you hammered? No, just... Just hungry as fuck. Well, I definitely wanted bagel cream cheese and then I needed a pudding and then that bread then was ironed me up. blazed as well, mm. so... Um, but I think that's pretty much it and just been working, working, working because, oh, she's a busy month, but... Oh, yeah, we've got a couple of drag race orders on, haven't we? So don't, don't hot up our spot. Anywho. Previously on RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Diabetti and Orion Story got to return to the race and join the gaggle of gals in a pair of balls. Crazy. 42 looks were seen over two themes and three categories. Even crazier. Will, 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 will. <laughs> Leaving June and Maddie to battle it out. And unfortunately for June, that jambalaya had turned and it was time for her to jump on that big old compost heap in the sky. (laughs) The thought of you rocking and rolling on Sunday morning, right in that delirious from four hours of sleep. (laughs) Big compost heap in the sky. Um, Yeah, I mean, sad to see you go, honey, but happy to watch your pack you know mm. um miss uh miss jasmine's speech very re- much reminded me of miss fame's thinking out loud on set <laughs> <laughs> um i was listening as i was finishing as i was up at 7 15 this morning to finish a week to send it off for a shoot at nine o'clock this morning <gasps> Oh, Jesus. I was listening to Race Chaser and they said on it that Jasmine Kennedy has the same energy as James Charles, which yeah. is so <laughs> fucking on the nail. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm lucky enough to not know enough of James Charles in a non What a gorgeous place to live in your head. World. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I, I mean, I everything that I've learned again about James Charles Isn't has literally been pedophile? against... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's been against my full emotional and psychological will because... There is no room in my life for James Charles. Um, but he is literal. He is theatre kid personified. Mm. Like that whole energy. Like it was just, it was a lot. And as I said, that's a lot of emotions for safe. Well, I was going to say, I love it when the, a legacy phrase comes through. Because yeah. we first heard it with yeah. Trixie and then more recently heard in Canada's Drag Race over Beth yeah. breaking down for not going. Giving you a <laughs> Hamlet monologue about being upset. Like, that's all cute, but I ain't reading that, you know? Like, I can't. She could do with a little more imposter syndrome, if I'm honest. 
because the look. Um, and cornbread openly yawning at it. That's very my energy. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, this could uh, go. But then we head into the mini challenge. Well, it's not, uh, that's a complete lie. It's not the mini challenge at all. But well, we it get, is, for well. example. It's a new day in the work room. Yeah, I guess RuPaul so. RuPaul comes in. What about Jasmine saying, all these southern bitches got to earn money? Um, okay, colonizer. That doesn't seem like an okay. I think she was being a, like, look at all of us southern bitches getting that But the way they looked all back at her, like... um... They don't like her, I think. (laughs) (laughs) True. I barely recognised Deja walking in. She looked like a sort of Floridian OAP. Yeah, With the big glasses and the hat. But also by way of Alexis Mateo out of drag as well. There's something... uh, (laughs) When she had her old greasy ponytail. Yeah, I guess so. I felt quite bad for Jasmine. Imagine waiting all these episodes for a storyline and then it is that you're the annoying one. I mean, I love when people do this. Like, don't interrupt me. It's always the loudest bitches saying nothing. I mean, take it from one. Like, always, like, she's like, sorry, can you not interrupt me? Like, I'm trying to talk, blah, blah, blah. And then just, like, goes on to talk. It's like, okay, there's... Say something, bitch. You're clearly just angry (laughs) she's taking your oxygen. Where are the jokes? It's like, it's, that's the entire co- uh, entire concept of a conversation, like back and forth. I say something, then you go. Then I say something. And she's just like, every single time. I feel like I've said that in the podcast. That's not how podcasting works, Loki. <laughs> <laughs> I talk over you. Uh, but like, it's just so funny that she was getting so annoyed that like any time that Jasmine chimed in, she was like, no, 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 no. I'm talking. It was like, you really just don't want to say anything, do you? Well, what, yeah. How did you feel about the intervention? Well, our good friend Magua, um, Mackie. Let's Mackie- keep it for now just in the premise before they've started working in their teams oh okay sure 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 um i (laughs) the thing is as someone who famously talks too much you've got to know when to shut up when Mm. you're like okay i'm sucking all the oxygen out of the room just shut the fuck up and she couldn't do it yeah um it was just mad to see jasmine literally doing what cornbread is telling her please not do while she's doing Mm. it like it was literally, literally the now. fame. You're doing it now. You're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally the fame thing when they're like, get out of your head. And she's like, I'm just in my head. Like, no, no, no. Stop fucking talking, you mental bitch. Like, um, But I just, there was a bit of it where it got a bit like t- too spicy for well, me. Well, I, I found, like, yeah, later on when they break up, it got a bit extra. But I guess we'll get to that. We will. We will. Because if there's one thing we are, it's chronological and regular. Yeah. Shout out to our fiber <laughs> pills. I was trying to think of a drag name. Crow. No. Logic. No. <laughs> I think it's safe to say us creating drag names that that time is done. <laughs> so this main challenge I found quite, I wouldn't have liked to do it. Really? I actually thought for once this was quite good. So I've written it. I've tried to break down what Rue said was seemed to take about 20 minutes to get through it. Most importantly, before that, did you clock Rue's hentai girl with a dragon tattoo necklace? I did not. She had a sort of like hentai- Do you know what hentai is? The porn. Okay. Fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she had some sort of like anime dragon necklace on. It was like, um, okay. I, She's trying all. to relate to Willow Pearl, wasn't she? Will- <laughs> <laughs> Lottie said that Willow. <laughs> Sorry, I was watching it with my good, my good Judy Lottie. It's nice to have a lesbian perspective on Drag Race. Is it? Um, she <laughs> said. JK that, was She saying. said that Willow looks like Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> She's the woman of so many faces. Willem also said that she looks like Casper, the ghost, if we turned into a real boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So many faces. I don't think any beats thingy from Sabrina, though. No, Hilda. no, no. no. Absolutely <laughs> so, right. In two competing teams, the Honeys have got to shoot super teasers for the season, shooting around the set with Michelle and Carson to create moments of drama, glamour and shade. <laughs> Um, and the runway is night of 1,000 J-Lo's. It looks like I've written 1,000 kilos. <laughs> oh, that's how much that's in the butt, yeah. isn't it? You speak to Rylan. Um, <laughs> do you remember how sad we were that we missed J-Lo in Vegas? We planned this whole um, American road trip thing and it turned out that we ended up in Vegas midweek. And it meant we missed J-Lo, we missed Backstreet Boys. Like, like, like they were there and performing. It was their mid-season, but the only nights that we were there were their nights off. Yeah, like Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday. We're like, wow. Yeah. Um, but so now good. I'd want to go see the shit show that is, baby, we made it, we made it. Uh, the Vegas Review, is that what it's called? I don't think it's like a, you can only see one show in Vegas where we can't see J-Lo. I know, we're but I'd be desperate to, to see that, just seeing for the videos. Apparently the girls are so tired in it. Just like, they're all like, there's just been, so many videos of the girls coming on and it's like they're giving like 
six percent. Oh no! Well, TKB and Jada Essence Hall oh, have been added to the die. roster. Um, Can we just I, say, we did say this personally, but we need to say it on the pod. Mm. Let's talk about the nastiness that is Bianca Del Rio saying, listen, honey, you can paint to look like, who did she say? Like you, Beyonce. No, but she was like, you can paint to look like, oh. <laughs> like um, Janet. You can paint to look like blah, blah. But she was like, Beyonce is just pretty. And she was like, I want to do Beyonce on Vegas. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, okay, Beyonce. And she said that to her. And guess what? Guess who's not doing Beyonce on Vegas, Bianca Del Rio? Guess who is doing Beyonce on Vegas? I don't think BDR wants to do B. I don't think she could. You can't paint to be a Beyonce. <laughs> she can't paint to be Beyonce. And now TKB's up on the Vegas strip doing Beyonce. So eat your words. Um, I loved the Night of a Thousand, mainly because I just like seeing the split screen so I can judge yeah. how well they've copied the outfit. I absolutely love doing it. When they did Gaga, stunning. When they did Madonna, Phenomenal. J-Lo, no. Well, forget, don't forget about Spice Girls. The um. reason that the Gaga one was so good is because they had the bitch there and she was like, oh, yes, yeah. Marco gave this that to me, Jean darling. That was Jean Castel yeah, 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 I love this <laughs> yeah. one, darling. So thank you for reminding me how beautiful I was. Yeah, McQueen made that in 10 minutes for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But firstly, not no disrespect to, to Miss Joni Love, but was that her name? Lonely Love. <laughs> Miss, everybody say Lonely Love. <laughs> If I came out Jenny expecting Love. to see Jennifer, J-Lo, Jenny from the Block Lopez and she wasn't there, I'd be so pissed. I know. And instead you get, oh, no. No, moving on. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think that's how wheezy I am this morning. Right. Two questions for you. When getting picked for teams, firstly, whose would you want to be on? And secondly, what Soul Train move would you do over to the team once they had chosen you? Um, my Soul Train move would be the little boot scoot, you know, the shift of the legs. You know what I'm doing? Hip and feet. Hip sure. and feet. Hip and feet. That, just because it's got the right amount of uh, NRG. Um, and I would want to be any place that Willow Pill is because I would in something like this I'd be like you're my style of comedy mm. you've got you. she gets it so I'd want to be with her what about Same. you? yeah Willow Team Willow for we're sure we're just following whoa, 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 whoa. I'd maybe worm down or do the kind of lasso and hook it and oh, then yeah. the yeah. jump jump Love shimmy from you. down um, how would you deal with being chosen last I know we've said this before but specifically do you think you could stop yourself from having that like burnt face, twitchy eye feeling no. when the camera goes on you. Because I, I blush. I can't stop that. So my, I would be just like... But maybe you'd just be really angry. Maybe you wouldn't blush. Maybe you'd, steam would be coming out of them there. I would be pressed. Oh my God, me too. I was just literally like, it really... Hit- Especially for like a, co- a stupid comedy challenge. Yeah, fine. Maybe not for like a sewing challenge or like a singing one. But if you're not picking me for a for stupid For literally one, anything. Because I would hope that you would be like, yeah, maybe this isn't his wheelhouse, but he'll be good to have in my team for morale, for energy, for for jokes, whatever. Just like I was literally watching it with Jasmine, like you could see that she was getting that like like twitchy bum. But what up. does she expect? Like the whole rest of the episode is about how annoying everyone yeah, finds yeah, yeah, her. Yeah, absolutely. Can I say every time Lady Camden pops up with her faux Malcolm McLaren drag, it is I it is so jarring. Like every time it's like. You know when they have them like weird sort of things? You know, like when um, Gaga or Miley or whatever. Comes in as a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, it feels like there's like an imposter. It's like the missing Weasley has like come onto the screen. Mm. And it shocks me every single motherfucking time. I think at this, at like, and I find it too jarring. And I feel like it's fucking up my flow of the show. I'm gonna need Ice to step in and bring her back to old Blighty. Because I don't, there's, it's, it's not, it's not working for me. On Race Chaser, they think that her and Angie are fucking... I know! How weird. But I'm sure they'd be bumping purses. I don't know who's... I don't know who's taking the taking the strong hand on that one. I think probably Lady Camden. Really? Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> um, question. Are you oatmeal raisin? If not, what are you? I am probably pink wafer. Are you? Yeah. That's You know, that's one of look, my faves. Look cutesy and... Yeah. Just light and airy. With a vintage touch. (laughs) Yeah. With a vintage touch. I would be dark chocolate and mint, I think. Like an after eight. But why? Because it's bitter, but elegant. Fine. Next question. (laughs) Have you seen Drop Dead Gorgeous? No. Wow. 
Wow, seminal piece of queer cinema. Denise Richards at her finest. I love Denise Richards. Oh my God, me too. One of the greatest Bond girls ever. And such a she weird... a Bond girl? Yeah. Such a weird choice for Bongo as well. She, let, let me pull up a... Oh, I'll tell you what. We'll put a photo up on the pod. I mean, we won't. No, we will. I promise. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we never saw Denise Richards again. So with this challenge, I think it's just very hard. Like, it's hard to think of something originally funny that could be a fake moment without copying either an existing joke, like yeah. a thing, or it becoming romper room fuckery, which like I feel like a lot of it was just a bit like, oh, we're just going to scream and hump sofas and stuff. Yeah. And it just gets like a bit like manic. Luckily, in their final product, it had been cut together a bit better. So it did seem just like manic moments. But when they're just literally all just like, screaming at each other it's like this isn't entertainment <laughs> no and i did think like actually the concept of it because it's unscripted i was like the concept of this could be quite good i didn't love any of them to be honest but like i thought it, this is more interesting than giving them like what, another tired like sitcom or whatever yeah it's like, mm, this could be good what would you want to what would you want your scene to be i don't know that's why i was like this i that's why I felt a bit stressed about watching it. I was like, oh, God, this all feels tired. Mm. But I'm sure you could do something with it. I feel like as I was falling asleep last night, I was like, oh, that's what I would do. I'll add that to my notes tomorrow, but obviously can't remember. Can you believe that Georgia suddenly lost the ability to say words or comprehend any thought? She was yeah. zero, zero brain cells, just vibes. Like It's like, oh, if I actually, yeah, if I'm not just like spinning and dancing, then I get stuck. Yeah. The bimbofication really hit hard. What would you have done for an exaggerated version of yourself? Um, did you see Willow Pill on Twitter was just like, um, I just uh, imagined me if I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I do like really, really, really busted heavy makeup. I sort of do. But like, that's not a personality. I do. Wow. I think you should be looking in the mirror when you say that. Well, I'm asking um, you, it's like, how do, would you do, yeah, do like demi drag. Um, just like super screechy, super annoying, talking too much. Yeah. Um, I'd just be a, a chimney sweep, essentially, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Oh, what? Um, um, yes. Yeah, so now I guess we could talk about cornbread carrying on these life lessons. Sorry, can I just really quickly say? I I was absolutely screaming at Maddie retelling that quote with the least amount of charisma a person can have. Imagine like... What quote? When she was like, oh, we should do that thing that you remember like Shandela says, like, I don't have a sugar daddy. She's, She's very flat, like, isn't she? she? I never had a sugar daddy. And she was like, and it would be really funny. And everyone just like looked at her like, oh my God. Like she literally doesn't have like an ounce <laughs> of charisma in her I at know, all. I mean, Akira, and Jiria was going the fuck off at her yeah. later on strange but let's talk cornbread yeah it just feels a bit much for me like no one made you detective chief inspector of morals <laughs> dci morales like who died and put you in charge like you've you've said your piece you've said this is what i don't like about you and this is what you should change for the group but then like don't was... like tell us to don't write notes write notes yeah. you listen you're listening like now you're just being i do dip. get it though because... and making the whole group feel so awkward i do i, the, I it was difficult because i like i kind of got both sides i've definitely been in that position where you're like with someone that's pissing you off and it's just like every single thing they say you're like shut the fuck up <laughs> shut the fuck up um but you're on tell oh sorry i'm really dropping my coffee over throwing you're on coffee te- you're on telly like like be conscious of that don't just be because that was cunty the whole thing. But also, I would be annoyed that she's like, sorry, I'm just, because I'm an advertising major, I'm just taking notes. It's like, we're trying to have a discussion. Like, why Why is he taking, what's it called when it's like someone's taking minutes. the minutes? Yeah. Why are you taking well, the minutes of this discussion? Well, because made like, them feel like they can't talk. So like, okay, I'm not going to talk, just like, give you this now and that'll be quiet. Because they made the, cornbread and made them feel like they're just, not even allowed But to what speak. they said is like, listen. And they're not listening. They're writing down. And it's like they've like positioned themselves again in this like condescending way of being, like, just so you know, like I'm, I'm, I really know what I'm doing. So I'm going to do a different task to every, to what everyone else is doing. It was just strange. But also cornbread, like chill the fuck out. There was one point when she was like sitting there. Um, it was very um, Monique, Precious's mum, like with the headscarf. She's like sitting there just sort of like, yeah, yeah. Like I'll put a picture up of, uh, uh, you know, who, 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 who gonna love me? I'm um, really just it. looking. Wow. Why would I have seen some depressing ass film? Precious is the best. It gave you the greatest co- quote in the world. My favourite colour is fluorescent beige. <laughs> you need to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> um, 
cutting back to the other team, I thought when Angie said, just because you haven't done something before doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you haven't tried it yet. That is the most Barney it's, thing I've ever heard in my life. It's the blackest way of life, honey. <laughs> it's an inspirational quote. Put it on merch. I think she probably will. It is so true, though. Like, that's how... Say say what you want, but that's how I live my life. It's like, just because I ain't tried it yet, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be a master of it in a month uh, because you got to start somewhere. Um, half half fake drag is basically our Zoom drag. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, okay. So it looks kind of like lol from far away. But um, then up close, wow, you've really just, it looks like they've done it with Sharpies. Mm. Um, and thank God that we are out of the world of online jobs. And hopefully that will never, ever return. Well, no, that is a lot quicker and easier than doing a real show. <laughs> that is true. We do not love to love to travel. Do you have a favourite untucked moment? Obviously, apart from the iconic shangles, who is going into Celebrity Big Brother? Can you believe? Absolutely fantastic. I think she's going to be loved. But very weird to put Shangela and Todrick in because Shangela does what Todrick thinks she does. Like... Todrick thinks that she's like the lovable, um, funny comedian, whereas like that's actually Shangela because she does it effortlessly. And I don't think Todrick is that likable. And I feel like they might, rather than unionise, well, there might... can't be two queer people of colour on the same program without them being like, oh, you're too, too the same. It's TV. It's all about the, the casting. It's all about right. This is the joker. Yeah, got this is the two, agitator. Two loud this gay is the... people. Two like queer I just people. I just think to shout no, no. Each other. I just think. Todrick would have done better if Shangela hadn't been there, is what I mean. I mean, everyone would do better if Shangela wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I feel like they, um, they're they they're quite similar in character. Because I, gu- I guess Shangela's not going to be in drag the whole time. But I just think that Shangela is going to be the heart of the season because everyone fucking loves Shangela in any room that she's in. Mm. And I think that that's what Todrick would hope to be. But Shangela's much more lovable, is what I meant. Sure. Nothing to do with being queer. Um... I what is my oh my favorite moment ever is if they ask me to motherfucking lip sync <laughs> just because it is it's like performance art it's like baby sit down first of all is everyone else's like non reactions to me it's like okay Brooke bitch. sat there with the drink like yeah like oh. you were gonna perform in that I, I'm color me yeah. unimpressed yeah and she's just in that like weird like stretch leotard just like and then she's like taken off again it's like the fucking going from an, one blonde wig to another it's just yeah. like a, a little leotard version of that cape okay i'd have to give special mentions as well to trinity the tuck and her awkward sipping of the drink yeah and also classic bitch i am from chicago that is a classic <laughs> also as well but i did uh i also live for too vague oh, from too vague the Vixen. Yeah, basically everything the Vixen did and untucked. Calling out Aquaria, making her cry. Calling out uh, Eureka, just like going fucking ham. Uh, she was really on a on a destruction tour there. Loved her. Um, when they were filming, obsessed with Orion's little ash blonde 60s weird grey blonde number. Do you know what I'm talking about when they were filming? Sorry. The- Sorry. It's because we've what? So now we're in the shoot. We're in the shoot. Girlies. Okay, I'll fast we're in forward. The shoot. Um, did I jump in? Did I jump too far? A little. I jumped too far. I was just basically going to say, I felt really bad for Alyssa. They're like giving her like the sort of dickhead edit, and like maybe her ideas aren't that great, but a lot of it is from the fact that there is a language barrier, and it just feels a bit gross when everyone's kind of like yeah. looking at each other, like oh, I don't know. Like your ideas were shit, but. Like it, it all just was a bit eggy. When I was watching this, I was saying to Lottie, like, imagine not, be, like, imagine not having one funny line in you, like, mm. and that's it. Like, if you're either someone that is witty and you have humour and uh, and humour that extends to other people, or you're someone whose jokes don't really hit, you know, like when you see queens and you're like, you're not a funny queen, but that's cool, whatever. That's fine, but don't be an unfunny queen that thinks they're a funny queen. But that's- like. I don't know if I could be funny in a, in a secondary language. Well, of course. I mean, of course. But I also get the feeling that, like, she's not... I don't feel like a whip from her. And I get mm. that she is speak, But she speaks... I, I mean, I don't want to speak on her experience. But, like, she is fluent and she does crack joke. Like, and she is fluent in English. Like, it's not like she's she's speaking broken English or whatever. But I understand that, like, as someone that couldn't make one witty comment in French, I get it. Well, yeah, I think in Modern Family, I, I think it was... In modern family, not in actually real life, Sofia Vergara's character is basically like, you talk to me like you think I'm like you think I must be stupid, but like this is my second language, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shut up. 
Don't run your mouth at me, fool. But I think as well, it's all about delivery because it's like she, someone like Yara Sophia, who I would say, it seems to me, her, I would say that, um, and not that we should be comparing, but like Alyssa does, it seems much more fluent and much more confident in her uh, English language. Yara Sophia really still gets jokes mm. because she does physical comedy. Do you know what I mean? It's like not all comedy is linguistic. So I do, I do think there's... It, Although I it think was, you wouldn't call her physical comedy I wouldn't, funny. I wouldn't. I wouldn't at all. I don't really find someone uh, on their knees cha 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 in a flamenco <laughs> outfit that funny. But people do really laugh. Do you know what I mean? People do think of her as funny. Um, so I don't know. Uh, but it was... it. Yeah, I am I totally agree. It's like, it's really uncomfortable when they're just like, ah, you really, you're stupid, bitch. Not funny at all. It's like... It was oh. a bit like with Charity Case and Crystal like, yeah, but... Is that funny though? Oh God! <laughs> oh my God! Cut to the jugular! All right, to the shoot! To the shoot! Baby, uh, baby, the greatest thing in the whole thing. I am from Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> we need that as a sound. Can we talk about? Yes. Because they're all. It annoys me that they just do both. They cut in between both teams. It's I don't kind... know who's on what team. So basically, Team Willow. I thought. This overacting with Kerry and Cornbread and yeah. Jasmine was so like they're both like shut up like that is so fucking hokey. I can't believe no one was like chill. Yeah. And also, I love how they're meant to be in their half baked dragon. Kerry Colby is there like yeah, fully gorgeous. So. <laughs> it was so sort of like village hall community project acting, like first time up in drag like drama club. It was so unbearable. Like, why are you saying it at the same time and yeah. like? So like performative. Let's let's discuss the elephant in the room. That creepy little sailor outfit really hits different after you've seen those leaked photos of Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird because she was. What did I say about her? Yeah, she had like Cleopatra eyes, but then the hair. Cleopatra. And, yeah, she had like really weird, like exaggerated kind of like oh, like a cat eye. No, like like how you like you would do bad Cleopatra. Makeup. Is that like the sort of like V from the corner of the eye? Just look at it in a second. Okay. But then her outfit <laughs> looks look like she's doing some kind of wartime child, like, tap dance <laughs> routine. God, that's funny. Like, got sent out, yeah, sent out to the troops in 1936 or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, like, listen, we don't, unfortunately, again, all nudes that I've seen from the Drag Race fandom are against my will. People on Twitter... They do not get blocked and uh, reported quickly enough and they pop up. The last person. Love is like against my will when against everyone else's will, he'll put them in the group chat. Listen, yes! I'm, I'm a communicator. I'm a I'm a storyteller. I'm a narrator. Um, but yeah, absolutely horrible. Um, also, can I say another really scary and damaging thing? Lottie went, uh, you know, Michelle was sitting there, obviously directing them. Mm. My lesbian friend, Lottie. She went, uh, is Michelle just wearing jeans? And that is a perfect example of how you have radicalised these new drag fans to expect full high whore pageant drag from all time from these hoes. I was like, yes, she's in jeans. Is that a problem? She was like, is she not going to get dressed up? She's on telly. Wow. Charlotte Vallis. So the ladies can't be comfortable. Coming from a lesbian as well, who I imagine was sitting there in overalls and Birkenstocks. Exactly. Livid. And this is what the new drag fans expect. They weren't with us in the trenches. I really in, don't like it, Kath. They weren't with us in the trenches in season one when for 90% of the show, the girls weren't even in drag. <laughs> even on the runway sometimes, barely in drag. Think of Ongina in her teeny tiny top I don't hats. think Orion Story is wearing any makeup to this day. Wow. The legend has it. <laughs> um, I thought, though, if we're on Maddie's team now. Yeah. We're um, bouncing back and forth, honey. <laughs> I've tried to keep some kind of order. Yeah. But that's out the window. Um, yeah, in contrast to Shut Up, I thought Deja was really the jewel in the crown for this team. Like, obviously, Angie had her a couple of moments, that amazing lip quiver. Yeah. It's very good. And obviously... Let me tell you something, you ugly bitch. But Deja <laughs> seemed to be the only one out of everyone who understands that, like, this isn't a pantomime. This is meant to be, like, clips from the show in which you're being natural i feel like her kind of straight manness really pulled it together otherwise that would have been a fucking nightmare and i was very into dyer's uh neon zebra print oh my god me too i loved that look what's really difficult though is that every time it cuts to diabetica i think that she is 
like, you know, when like, say when they did like, uh, they'll cut back to moments of yesteryear from Drag Race and they'll be like dressed up as past drag, like when they did uh, the I, 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 mm. uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, or when they did like the, the untucked challenge mm. where... Who is our gorgeous and Puerto I don't Rican? Like you. Who's our gorgeous Puerto Rican queen that was dressed up as um Tyra Sanchez? Lenaisha. Lenaisha Sparks. Um that sometimes they're dressed up. Every time it cuts to Di Becker, I think she's dressed up as Crystal Method. Just because the eye is so iconic. But it's not even really it's like I was trying to look at it because basically all that eye was was just black and then this like a little white bit. It's like, the shape. But that was literally just like black circles apart from the little white mm. tear duct bit. I don't, maybe I'm looking for it rather than it is. Um, I'm obsessed with Willow's. Okay, little... we're back to Team Willow. <laughs> Ew, back and forth. I'm obsessed with Willow's little Miranda Hobbs wig. Mm. I am dying little Executor Dyke. And those fucking um, lips. Uh, it took me a good 20, 30 seconds to realise who Bosco was. What was Bosco wearing? Just like brown, like sort of new. She was one that was like arguing with Kerry. She had like brown wig, but without her. Like signature eyebrows and just like she does wearing really wishy washy makeup. And yeah. like, the fuck is this and the, bitch? The little flat wig. I, it what there, the flat wig. There was, oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong bit. There was, I wrote down something and then changed the name of the person three times. I was like, so and so look, I was like, Bosco looks like, no, Lady Camden looks like, no. Orion, I was like, I don't have any idea who this person is. Um, but then I found out that it's Lady Camden. She was giving me sort of adore tease in that rooted... Adore meets Lily Savage. Yes, yes, yes. I was yes, kind of into rooted... this more, a lot more draggy, made up beat on yeah, her, yeah, yeah, rather yeah. Thought, than okay, this kind of okay. natural girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's really fighting hard with us, because once you call yourself Lady Camden... It's, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's really hard to come back from that. But come on, you looked really gorgeous in Untucked. So congratulations. I thought it was really funny when it cuts back to Georgia's because in that shell suit, she looks. It looks like it's like a nineteen nineties like Argentinian football player like talking <laughs> about the game like at the World Cup yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Such a funny little look. I know, but like a jockey. I don't think football. I don't think he'd be a footballer. Have too little. <laughs> he'd be like, is that a jockey's a little? Aren't they? I don't know anything about sport. Yeah, and it was my <laughs> it was my comment, and I thought that he looked like a footballer. So okay. you make your own observations. Okay. Um, then we head into elimination day back in the work room. If Jasmine is as bad as everyone is saying she is, how has she got this far in her life without being told about herself before? And having this realization that if she wants friends, she needs to listen. How can this only be happening? Now, are you sitting in front of me and telling me that you don't know anyone, don't look at me, don't say me, that needs to shut the fuck up that doesn't know it? But it's she's like, like, yeah, and now I realise that, like, yeah, I'm, I, if I want to make friends, I'm going to have to change. But it's like, but how old are you? Have no one ever you've come this far in your life and no one's ever been like, honey? A, my two guesses are A, maybe she doesn't have many friends. Because of said Or B, thing. she has, which is... A hundred percent. The people that I know that they need to shut the fuck up surround themselves with other people. Can that... you charades me who needs to shut the fuck up? Um, yeah. Shut the fuck up. Um, they <laughs> surround themselves with people. I can't believe you just got that in one hand movement. Um, they surround themselves with people that also need to shut the fuck up. And so they're all just sh- talking at each other. And no one's listening. And no one, yeah. So I, that would be my guess as well. Maybe she's just got a crazy drag family of people that... No one's listening. Mm. Everyone's talking. Um, Georges said that she'd already done J-Lo, but when they showed the picture, they showed the picture of an 11-year-old Ariana Grande. Yeah. Make it make sense. There's no J-Lo in yeah. here. <laughs> Very strange. Um, th- this whole parent conversation, the old switcheroo, th- father, I am gay. I am also gay. I, I mean, I would collapse. This was, I was obsessed with this story. It was literally like... The Spider-Man A meme. fairy tale. <laughs> uh, emphasis on the fairy. It's oh! Like, oh, so a... She pointed a at me when she said pageant that. queen. No, a beauty queen and a gay man have a baby and create this fucking pageant winning drag queen. It's like, you can't fucking write that shit. That's a story for the ages. And now you're both arm in arm heading to the gay cruises together and your dad's next to you obviously everyone's going to think he's your older boy- gay boyfriend and your dad's next to you in a speedo and you're both bumping t- to Caswell so absolutely lovely. mental and uh, this is also the second time 
we've heard this because on Drag Race Canada, Cynthia Kiss also came out with her at the same time as her dad. <sighs> you got to love it. Got to love that's lineage. Mm. Let us see. Um, I just, I, I was literally. How badly do you want to be in Auntie's Corner? <sighs> if oh only they'd let God. me in. I don't know. It's how. I, I think, think, I think the Auntie has to be middle aged. I feel like. When Kerry's calling herself an auntie, it's a bit like... I think it's more of a lifestyle. Sense of... I also think that Kerry is maybe older than she seems. Potentially. Old soul. I'm going to go like late 30s, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I want to see her five years ago. (laughs) Um, Had you heard the term bird watching before? I hadn't. Do you want to hear what Urban Dictionary says about it? Please. It's quite rowdy. Yeah. Commonly referenced toward a guy in prison who hangs out within eyesight of the urinals to look at other males' penises. Can also apply to the same activity being conducted in public areas where trough-style urinals are employed. Hey bro, mind your stick. That fun boy is bird watching. See him trying to act like that wall is the most fascinating thing in the world. Think about that fun boy. Wow. <laughs> um, I have, I can remember a unidentified a homosexual friend of mine when we were younger being like oh shown. I always he was yeah. like I always look at the urinals no matter where I was let me tell you as someone that doesn't have a developed urine fetish dick. yeah <laughs> as someone that has a button dick which is 90% foreskin um, I literally the dicks fine dicks with piss coming out of them in a room full of piss in a trough full of piss that ain't doing it for me. I don't want to be staring at someone else's wrinkly dick while they're pissing. I, uh, because in our household, we only really lock the toilet door if we're pooping. <gasps> and you've got your mirror. Sorry. He thinks it's so weird that there's like a mirror on the, the back of the toilet. It's just, it's it, until you've lived, until it is your lived experience, it's just very strange the first time that you go in there because it's, I'm just not used to like seeing myself in a full length mirror pissing while I'm pissing. That's weird to me because you sit down all the time so you don't see it. No. But like if you're standing up, you're like watching yourself and it's full length as well. It just feels very uh, cute actually. Well, anyway, um, because the door's always open, I often like to slowly open it ajar and spy on my lover while he's weeing. Maybe you should get him to do it in the shower and then it can be fully on you. I don't want it on me. I just like uh, to make him feel uncomfortable. Let's tell the dolls about... uh, So in Bergheim, which is a, obviously, I don't need to tell you, homosexuals (laughs) and queerlings, um, a very famous club in Berlin. Um, there is a very, very famous resident in Berlin. Obviously, so it's a two, it's a two, a twofa. Well, actually, how many? There's three: Panorama Bergheim and underneath Laboratory, um, which is uh, the sort of fetish uh, BDSM fetish. dot 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 of uh, the club. And you would think that it all goes on in there, but in actually main Bergheim, there's someone that's there pretty much every single weekend with their arm in the urinal. They like lean in the urinal. And when you go to the toilet, they like crawl up to you and beg you to piss in their mouth. I would 100% do it. I have done it. <laughs> so, um, And yeah, and they are there every single time. The first time that it ever happened, I nearly broke down into tears because I was so bothered by it. I was like, please, I thought they were really fucked. And I was like, do they know where they are? Have they had too much G? Oh my God, sorry. I was like, fuck. And then by the time, (laughs) by the sort of like sixth time of meeting them, I was like, you are the cutest person in the world. Rain on you. Ah, Can we just quickly talk about that scene in Old When That Bitch? (laughs) It's crawling through the tunnel and all of her bones are breaking. Ah! (laughs) I was literally like crying with laughter. She's like, her whole body is turned into a square because every bone in her has broken and it heals because the time... I really we need, need to get a someone... screenshot of that. I was literally crying with laughter. I really need someone as well to make it into a video with like, because she's like, literally... <laughs> it was like so fucking low. But did you hate it? I didn't hate it. Um... This is the new M. Night Shyamalan film, Old, about people that go onto a beach mm. and it's sped. They're basically, as soon as they go on the beach, their lives and time are sped up so that they're aging like very, very rapidly. Yeah, it was like an hour every 30 minutes or something, yeah. wasn't it? Um, yeah, I thought the end was a bit whack. That bit was hilarious. I'm sure it wasn't meant to be. It was fine. I wanted it to be a lot more deep than it was. And just so funny old M. Night cameo and all over I know, it. how long? Um, I just wish it had had a much better ending. But, yeah. you know, we live and we learn. 
Um, if you were going to liken your turgid member to a bird, what bird would that be? A bird of paradise, honey. Given all of those fancy, you've got loads of weird frilly bits on it. Yeah. Feathers and the like. Your turgid member. Turgid member. Yeah. Just let that soak in. Ladies. You heard it here first. Um, what would you uh, compare your swollen vulva to? She's not swollen. She's actually... A lot on the outside, though. No, not because at all. The flesh lettuce. No. She is like a actually little, very neat, very a little clam, clean, yeah. Tiny. Yeah. Um, so, like, razor clam. Homer's mouth. <laughs> no, but if it was a bird, what would it be? Um, maybe thrush. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely smooth flamingo because it's so bright pink. Mm, she's not that pink. She's more of a kind of flesh tones. Cooked chicken <laughs> <laughs> with the little dots all over it. Sometimes from, depends yeah. how rago I've been with the shaving. Yeah. Omg, we've got a video message from J Lo. I would have sobbed. <laughs> How they react to J-Lo is how we react to Ricky Martin. <laughs> I feel like different strokes with different folks. I wouldn't actually go that crazy for J-Lo. I would. And can I tell you why? It just pisses me off so much that she lies about the work. She looks absolutely sensational. She has always been one of the most gorgeous pe- living people on this planet. Her body's incredible. Her face's incredible. But you know, I've seen like maybe like four different interviews where she's like, I've never touched Botox. I've never. And like, she goes so hard and it's like, there is not. A person in Hollywood that has mm. like that, like. But also, look- when you see unretouched pictures of her, it's like, huh? So maybe, maybe she hasn't, and she just really goes in for the retouch. There's just no way that she looks like her face is just like completely unlined. It's just but that's because like I mean you're only seeing it how she wants you to. see But she it. doesn't look wrinkly when 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 you see unretouched photos. It's just a bit of like texture. She doesn't look wrinkly, does she? Mm, she looks like she's got a face aged. like marble, and she's <laughs> how old do you reckon she is? Like. 47 47 late 40s let's find okay. out yeah 100 percent. um but it is absolutely lovely to see her isn't it she's 52 wow well, actually i should know that because a few years ago when she did super well, i think i did a massive facebook post like this woman is 49 years old <laughs> this is the thing the fact that she can still dance of how amazingly she can um and she still looks like that like hmm, fucking grats honey jen pez i mean no Jen Pez, that's what they call on Wind and Grace. Do you remember when she's like... Oh, I thought that was some um, Ben Affleck Oh, thing, no. Combo. The fact that she's back with Ben Affleck reeks I think of that desperation. is solamente for the weird clown. Oh, 100%. 100%. Shall we F off? Let's. All right. BRB. Mm, stop it. You're such a tease. We all love a cheese. Cheese of this, cheese of that. But the most important cheese this year is the cheese we're doing to your wigs. That's right. Head over to trufflepigwigs.co.uk for the ultimate teas. You want a single, triple, double? We've got the teas for <gasps> you. Head over to trufflepigwigs.co.uk now. We are back, back, back rocking the main stage. Rock! What an absolutely motherfucking insane look on RuPaul. It looks like a panto outfit. It's very confusing, isn't it? I loved it. But, did you? <laughs> it was so gross, but the hair, she oh my God, looked it like, like an angel. Spun gold, that hair. Yeah, that same one from a couple of, se- maybe like last season, where like her hair looks like it's being lit from within. Yeah. Face gorgeous. The like hip and waist was insane the ratios be hitting i gave it eight truffles wow who's lonnie love i don't know where's she from where they found her i don't know gorgeous little face she is the american alison hammond is she without knowing anything about her you've decided that she looks based like on her. she okay. looks like her we'll put up a photo of alison hammond do you know who alison hammond is of course i do she's got a completely different face they look, I think they look like each other. Well, we'll see. Right, our runway theme this evening is Night of a Thousand JLos. Can I say something to you? No. I don't think she is worthy of a Night of a Thousand JLos because she's not someone that's known for fashion. She's not someone that's known for looks. She doesn't experiment in any way. She doesn't give you anything avant-garde, anything theatrical. She is literally either a boring bodysuit queen or a boring dress queen. Yeah, I don't think after Gaga and Madonna, anyone else has been worthy of a thousand. Who would you... I suppose Michelle Visage was interesting because she was there. Yeah. Who would you like to see in terms of Night of a Thousand dot dot dot? My love muffin asked me this and I found it quite hard. I guess maybe like Britney or Cher. 
Cher would be an absolutely fantastic one. Um, Britney. Yeah, I mean, I suppose what's useful is if the star has also done, like, uh, films, which I know obviously J-Lo has, but... Meh. We're going to do turn up in a maid's outfit. That was literally my next <laughs> question. I was about to say, what would you do for Night of a Thousand J-Lo's? Initially, I wanted to go iconic video look, maybe like the Tim High Heels um throwing toasters down the snowy streets of new york that's also what i wrote imagine coming in with the all i have like in like a fur lined puffer dragging along a toaster like crying all your makeup mm. down that'd be a sick look but then i thought compared to everyone else that would look really shit because everyone else has gone quite gowny so i had a quick look over her some of her red carpet looks and the only one that hadn't been done that i liked was this like 90s kind of like black. It looks like a sheer dress and it's all covered in like black stones. It looks like she'd be naked underneath, but it's not quite. But it's still quite boring because it's yeah. black, but it was quite sexy and vampy. They're George. just all so boring. Like it was all so dull because she doesn't, she's not someone that you look for for innovative looks. No. Um, but a made in Manhattan little thing could have been cute. But again, uniform, so dull. But I cannot believe I was frothing at the mouth especially as we mentioned it last week, that no one did any look from the cell. Mm. It's the only thing that J-Lo's ever done in her whole career that is like theatrical and incredible. The Cell, if you haven't seen it, is a sadistic, psychosexual, gothic masterpiece. Um, His and, own words, I'm sure. And Aiko, <laughs> there it actually was. Um, and Aiko um, Ishioka, who did the costumes for Apocalypse Now, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I believe they may have won a Golden Globe or something. For- How you say Golden uh, Globe? Bu- 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 uh, Talking of Golden Globes, what about Kerry's tits in the workroom? We'll get to it. <laughs> they, I believe they won a Golden Globe for the costume design, and the co- I'll put a photo up of like some of the costumes they are the most avant-garde like incredible structural costumes ever and you could have done if one person had done anything from the cell it would have like blown everything out of the water because they're so fucking iconic and interesting and it's just mental that like wouldn't you want that the only other thing that you could do if you're kerry colby is do the versace dress because mm. that's her only fashion moment i would say personally and i suppose if you've got the dress, wear the dress. Mm. Anyway, should we talk um the runway? Yeah. Okay. First up, we have Will Wild Peel serving virginal Grammys. Stunning! I want this outfit. It was gorgeous. I love it. I love her nine truffles. Love nine. I thought it was so pared down, but a, a, a tad frumpy, not in like a like a knowing wink sort of frumpy way i just thought it was just a bit drab but i did like it i, I gave, liked it I she gave it seven she had dragged up like she had added sparkles and more like fur to the original one so it was yeah. an exaggerated version yeah. of the category it's just after seeing i would just if she was gonna go a bit chuggy go the whole way do you know what i mean like i just i'd i'd still like to go for seven um then next up we have cornbread serving met gala See, it's hard because I don't like the original of this dress. I don't like the original of most of them. So it's a good recreation. I had a lot of back and forth with the wig. Like, oh. is it slicked black, slicked back or is it flat? Then I realised it was flat. I hated the length of it. I hated everything about the wig. It looks like the blonde wig had like slid the whole way back and but um, was showing like, underneath her. Yeah. Someone needs to sort this girl's wigs out. I'm sorry. Well, I guess an... I expect we'll see you in Singers and Mingers later, honey. Are we going to see? It's it's an ongoing problem. I gave it six. I gave it six and a half. Okay. Next up, we have Lady C slash, I think she's going to be Miss Congeniality because we saw three different times of her like building the girls up so far. And I keep yeah. on thinking, oh, she seems actually, even though, don't take the name in vain. She seems like a real nice queen. So Miss Congeniality, I reckon. Well, if we're making claims, I think Willow's going to win the whole thing. You do? Mm. Okay. I It's a two horse race for me between Willow and Angie. Mm. Um, but I don't think Angie has got the fashion chops to be serving looks. Mm. Um, but we have Lady C in a lovely corrible, coral number. Did you think it was corrible? Corrible. Mm, I thought it was elegant, but it was just a bit dull. Uh, then the original was quite dull. The, it was a lovely colour. I felt the crop top was really giving me Bollywood, which in the way that J-Lo's wasn't. Okay. Do you know when they uh, have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, the little top underneath the sari, for example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and really enjoyed how many stones there were. Um, I gave it seven truffles. It was very... Definitely, I thought it was fun. I liked the beat. I thought it was elegantly made. Um, so, yeah, congrats to you, honey. Um, then next up, we have Bosco serving wet 
gold Versace. Had she painted some kind of lion face on? I don't know. I feel like she like the bottom of her nose was kind of brown, like a lion's oh. would be. That's Maybe she was, was kind getting. of trying to do a bit of an illusion. Yeah. Illusion. One word, unlined. Uh, I've got many words. Okay. It's annoying because I really like Bosco, <laughs> but this just looks cheap and bait to me. It's like a little girl found some gold lame and just like wrapped it around themselves at a toga party. Yeah, it just wasn't... I would expect more from That's Bosco. like... Twelve pounds from misguided. It's an Amazon recreation J Lo Halloween outfit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It just wasn't. Uh, I had to give it six. I'm sad because six, I haven't marked her very well these last couple of weeks, oh. but I really, really love her. Okay, next up we have Her Royal Highness Kerry Colby. What the actual fuck? She was serving Lucrezia Gorgia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the dress. Next. And I'm glad that it was the modern one as well. Yeah. The um, reason Google Image was created, yeah. which is a real story. I need to speak a lot about that hair colour on her. It was <sighs> it was like there was the most luxurious raw silk growing out of her head. And on a week when we've just seen Tace serving that salted caramel fantasy mm. hair as well. Like, let the girls breathe. I need breathing apparatus. It was so gorgeous. And it's like, the fact, like she's wearing a fucking nude lip. She doesn't give a fuck if you even notice her lips because everything else is so gorgeous. She doesn't need lips. The face that could sink ships. <sighs> I just, when she came out, I was like, oh my God. Im- First of all, imagine being J-Lo being like, yeah, okay, brilliant. Yeah, you look, yeah, okay, you look great in the dress. No saddlebags here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Um, she, the body looked so sensational. When it got oh. to the face, I was like, this is probably the most beautiful you've ever been. I just, I, obviously I gave it a 10. Obviously, it's going to be anything 10. but a 10. It was absolutely everything. And the fact, spoiler, that they're in the bottom. I, okay, okay we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. okay, RuPaul, whatever. But I mean, watching, because I watched this sec- uh, this a second time. Did and- you? Yeah, because I thought the first time... I feel like if I watch it once and do my notes, I can't absorb it enough. Okay. But, like, the bottom two were clearly the bottom two for me, watching okay. it. Georgie Porgy pudding and pie serving a jumpsuit. I just wish that the new delusion matched her skin tone because it looked like she'd been very chalkily covered herself in calamine lotion on account of all the chicken pox she's suffering from. As you well know, when I had uh, scabies, my mum had to do that. Do I know this? Should I be worried? I'm sure I've brought up. I'm sure I've brought up on the pod before that I was like, when I was like, I think about nine or ten, I got scabies, and then it was only later on in life that someone was like, yeah, that the STD scabies, and I was like, but I had that as it's STD, isn't it? Like a skin disease? Isn't it? It's classed as an STD scabies. I don't know why. Oh, gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it can also be a bit like maybe like um herpes, herpes, yeah, 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 something like that. But I caught it when I was very young. Now, as someone that said that they have done J Lo in a pageant, I really thought that she was going to put her whole jaw gussy into this one. But that AliExpress flaming hot garbage number that she brought out, I was like, what? That is literally. I I've seen that outfit on AliExpress. Yeah, it's about sixteen dollars. Yeah, it is like if if as a, as a someone who loves J Lo and has also done them that. That yeah. was it. And Mental. it's like, if you want to do that look, then at least like have 3D stones, not just like flat foil like yeah. thing. Um, and then the dancing was a bit weird. But look at her skipping down that runway like a fucking Lipitzana show horse. <laughs> like one of St. Trinian's, weren't she? I right. gave okay, seven and a half seven and for a the half. presentation. Okay. But like a six without it. She's a bugger for the presentation. I go to five. I was like, I don't know what this is. Um, next up, we have Jasmine Kennedy serving Dior Silhouette. I really don't like it. I could Aww. see it's a good recreation of the dress. Beautifully made. It looks to me like someone's just swilled the girl with a vodka cranberry. <laughs> like, no, it just yeah. wasn't exciting to me. And the colours were a bit off. Like The zits were stoned. Mm, I felt like J-Lo's one looked luxe and her one just, maybe it wasn't as red. It was a bit more pink and then that made it a bit, I don't know. I didn't like it. I gave it seven. I gave it, it six. It just wasn't for me. Um, the Dior silhouettes are hard to do. Next up, we have Ms. Morphosis. More for cisgender in all white. I just wrote cheap, five. 
Again, like, fine for a doppelganger of the look, but in the picture drag race show, she had a ponytail. So, yeah. like, give us... Why was she serving Maddie in Paris? I don't want to see that. No. Weird ber- beret. Don't even want to see Emily in Paris. No. But, yeah, like, give us... Like, you could have done a mini lols thing and Something. just had, like, the biggest fucking ponytail yeah. in the world. Your J-Lo. Um, I gave it a six. Again, questionable styling. Questionable taste. Sure. But straight. So. Well, as someone who's caught up on Race Chaser, you see that they are basically saying the reason Maddie has no style is because she's never had a dick up her ass. And that is really where the style got I believe that's getting a pounded into you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, next up, we have Deja in a swimsuit, Mary. I really wish she had used a similar print to J. Lowe's, which I assume was Versace. Yeah. Rather than just a plain blue. They, they just so look like weird. satin curtains. She, uh, first of all, she looked like, f- first of all, we need to address that hungry, hungry snatch that was going on. Did I you wasn't s- mad at that. Oh my God. But like when they sort of like zoomed in on it and it was like, from how like badly placed her tuck was, like the, the like very, very thin bottom of the swimsuit was like over to one side. And then it was also sort of like nipped up a bit. Like she had a, a moose. Sounds moose, like, it's like all when like, I got stung by jellyfish in the sea. <laughs> okay, I'll flat it was just out. all very, very strange. I thought this is this as a recreation is unforgivable. I gave it four. And to be commended on it, I thought I was losing my mind. I was like, are we in an ulterior world? Like, are we seeing the same thing? Because also, like you said, like the other one was like a classic Versace, um, like print, and it also was like structured really well and stuff. And she just she was in a bathing suit with a little. Cabana cover up. Mm. Weird. Um, I thought she looked nice in the face, I guess. Yeah? Okay. I gave her a six. Okay. Um, next up we have Diabetica serving biker chick question mark. I wrote given us rocker J Lo. Rocker. Um, it didn't really read J Lo to me. I would never have looked at that and been like, that's J Lo. No. But so it I, was. Yeah, it was. I gave it six. I gave it seven and a half. Okay. I liked it when the uh the skirt came off and it got a bit You often chappy. do. Yeah. yeah. Um next up we have Angie. I've been Met Gala. She's here to make a statement. I hated that drag necklace, though. In the original, yeah. In the original, it's them details for me. Like in the original, because I thought the dress and actually the wig looked cheap. Because uh, J Lo's one that she wore to the Met Gala was like incredibly, incredibly fine fibres. Yeah, and there then, was a lot of density there, which yeah. thingies didn't quite have. And that looked sort of like you know that sort of like cheap trimming stuff that you mm. get. It was just that sort of like a cap with that on. Um, so I didn't love it, but I love her. Same. I gave it six. Well, yeah, I was like, I wish there was a bit more volume or jewels on the headpiece it because it's, yeah, it just seemed a bit empty. And actually, God, I need to stop listening to Race Chaser. They were talking about um, Pangina Heels' promo oh, yeah. look. Yeah. And they were saying, because she's basically wearing that, but they were saying like from the shape of the head, you can tell she's got some hair on underneath because it yeah. doesn't look just like head with a thing, which Angie's unfortunately did. Hedwig. But I gave her an eight, apparently. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Alyssa Hansa. Did you serving clock? Lady Baller. <laughs> Did you clock the tie? The the glitter tie? Yeah. Oh, my God. Struck. We have got this piece of costume jewellery in the studio. I believe Georgie B's got it at the moment. What? I think Georgie B's got Why it. Why the fuck is she I'm got sure it? I saw it the other day in a photo and I was like, I believe that's our... Uh... Nasty. I mean, I will listen, require the interest on we've that. stolen from her. Have we? For the shoots. All right. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. but we've got a diamante tie, basically. Very um, Avril Lavigne does but also Tiffany. Very businesswoman. Businesswoman who needs to be glam in the in the boardroom. Um, I actually, this is my favorite. Apart from obviously the look, this was my favorite look so far. Um, and I actually, there was something about this that I quite liked. I thought that the, um, the lapel, there was something quite cunty about the lapels. But then when she took it off and she had that weird ill-fitting corset underneath mm. that was a bit, I don't want to keep on using her name in vain, but it was a bit Jay Jolie, like mm. a bit sort of like bric-a-brac, crazy. Um, a bit Lisa Frank, everything stuck to a corset. Um, and I, it didn't fit very well. And then I was like, mm. but I gave it an eight. Uh, I liked the suit. Um, yeah, I thought when she took the jacket off the course, it just seemed a bit like flat and shapeless. Yeah. It was just a, like a bit 2D. It's just difficult with things like that, isn't it? Because if that was on a woman, it would be fine because it would look different. But when you're a man and you've got like a, a big shoulder. But like put in then... some fake boobs and some pads then. Yeah, it's just more that like when you have them sort of like, you know, them like gross, like flat corsets that don't accentuate like an hourglass. On a man, when you've got big shoulders, 
we need that corset to force an hourglass because you're a blocky man. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, or throw a pad on. So it's like a girl can get away with that, but mm, not so much on... Uh... But I gave it Sevs. Yeah, okay. Um, and then last up, we have Orion Story serving veins. And I don't need to tell you, mm. this freaked me out. Yeah, this is like... There's something about the thickness of the pattern on the lace. Yeah. Like on JLo's, it was fine. But on this it one, it like... just looked like gross blood vessels. Yeah, it didn't look like veins on JLo's, I didn't no. think. So yeah, yeah weird it's... way to take it. Because I was trying to see what is the difference. And like on the leg panels, they both had that kind of like herringbone bit. Yeah. But I think it is just literally like the, th- I think the lace was the same, but JLo's was like a thicker print of it, if whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, go on. Wear some makeup. <laughs> <laughs> me personally this is a drag not, show. not a Ryan story just like if we're going to be recorded early in the morning can it's a request yeah I feel like she's wearing less and less like remember like from her episode when she went she was giving us that like, weird and wacky like blue eyeshadow with like, the kind of yeah. mushroom fungus spores and now it's like she's going so stripped back like well, she's only doing wearing J-Lo. neutrals yeah, but everyone was doing J Lo. No one, everyone else looked like they were yeah. makeup. I think that some people maybe were going a bit more towards. Oh, I'm a beautiful Latina woman that doesn't really. J Lo is also not known at all for makeup. Think of like when you're doing Gaga. Think how easy it is to like create a fully conceptual look. Like J Lo, it's like you can't even paint like J Lo. No, but you just do drag makeup in neutral tones. Yeah. I feel like last week Orion wasn't barely wearing no makeup as well. When Rue was like, "You're out. very lovely, aren't you?" She's like, "Yes, I am." I was like, "Call it out, call it out." Here? Right. So I gave six truffles. Let's talk Zing and Ming. How many truffles did you give for Ryan? I gave it seven. No, I want to put change that to six. No, not lad. Okay. Let's talk uh, Zinger and Minger. Zinger, got to be Kerry's for the colour. Okay. Mine was RuPaul's. I just, the colour again. Mm. Um, and Minger? Cornbread flat lob. Mine is cornbread slash Orion's flat little shaky. Like the little brown thing that she wore on the runway. Just such a strange... She wore like just I literally. I thought she had like a big sort of up and back. No, she wore literally just like a a, a flat brown wig. Um, or maybe it was actually in the chat in the in the challenge. I can't remember which one, but it was. Either way, you're dead uh, to me. Yeah, it wasn't it. Very heartbroken that they're breaking in cornbread so early on. Like just straight away, uh, tears. It always seems like they're good for her. Really? You yeah, she's healing. Was- Healing them here. That's what it made it seem like she was saying. Um, also, as well, just crying that uh, so much of the episode, about two thirds of the episode, had been taken up by Cornbread being like, Jasmine talks too much. And then she went on that monologue, like that the blubbering monologue. I was mm-hmm. like, mm, okay. But very into it. Based on watching the two videos, I thought Team Willows was a, a clear winner. It was a lot less hokey, even though special, yeah, as I said, special credit to Deja and um, Angie's quivering lip. I did felt theirs was much more interesting. Uh, did you clock Maddie being swung around by Daya in like the bit where they were all being madcap? Daya? Daya. Daya. Daya or Deja? Diabetica. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, did you notice that bit? No. My worst bit for it was when they were like, baby, we're going through a pandemic. You can't be licking mirrors. Community mirrors? And you've got your tongue on it? No. Couldn't be me. I mean, it's not... You really have to like lean up and out of your way to get. I don't think anyone else is going to touch that by mistake. I hope so. I, ho- I just imagine grabby paws. Half of these gals can't even clean the mirrors. Well, from exactly, the floor. just the residue of it. <laughs> um, yeah. I also, I really don't think anyone should be allowed to critique Kerry. Like, don't compete where you don't compare. Like, why is anyone telling Kerry about herself? Mm. I think she's just there to be admired and to be gazed at. But like, don't don't com- critique her. <laughs> I uh, was glad that Loney mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, about the um, kind of like fat joke crutch you that were, so many yeah. of the larger girls do. And I really, I really do hate it because, yeah, it's obviously it's like sort of drummed into them, like, make this joke before people laugh at you about it. But yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you're funny. You don't need to do that. And Cornbread's done it a lot since they've been on. And I just think that, it, that I definitely agree with the idea that it's like, I don't want you to feel like you have to. And like you're making the joke before other people do. But also it's just like, it's not actually very funny. No. Like it's not. And especially because if you look at legacy, if you look at your silkies, your um, y- your latrices, like the joke has been done and it's been done a lot. Mm. And I don't know. I say, and it's been done well. And I was going to be like, well. has it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I totally agree. Um, Alyssa saying, yeah, it's difficult because it's not my first language. And then RuPaul 
who is maybe the most emotionally unintelligent person in the world going, yeah, it's, it's, um, we need like nuance. We need like, we need to share the joke with you. We need like a, a more like better understanding. It's like, that's literally what they're saying. Like, this is not my first language. Like I lack nuance. That's because it's not my first language. It was just like, why are you like, yeah, I feel like normally a- when that happens, then like the second bit of the conversation is a lot lighter, but this yeah. is like doubling down on why you're shit. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like, well, because because this isn't my first language, I actually find it difficult to break jokes. And he's like, yeah, what we need is jokes. And that comes with the language. It's like, you are just CEO of not listening. Where are the jokes? Yeah, that just felt very tone deaf as, mm-hmm. as bloody per. They just never seem to get it. They invite Puerto Rican queens on. And then they're like, you're just not funny because I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the language. Yeah. It's like, fucking hell um it really seems like rupaul got about three breakthrough psychological moments this episode and doesn't it she jerking off that. under the table it's like when people like come in with rickets and they're just like sickness <laughs> be gone it's like yes thank you get rid of my you've been rickets. healed yeah um i can't believe deja was safe uh oh. what you think she should have been in the top what deja no bottom she was Terrible one outfit. of the best in the I didn't, challenge. I didn't, I didn't think so. She was the only person like giving realness, which is what you needed. Realness. Mm. Realness. Um, she was the only one that had any like comedic levels to her. Okay. My stomach was in my asshole with this bottom three. I was like, okay, there's too there's too much to lose here. I don't want to. I really, really. I I know you said that that you think they deserved it, but I didn't think that they should have been the bottom two at all. I don't know who thinking about it. Maybe Orion. Should have been somewhere in there. There, I feel like, first of all, Kerry's look was 100% the best out of all of them. I don't think the runway really comes into it that really? much. No. Okay. Well, I was just... Because, like, yeah, in the challenge, it's just like, oh, girl, watching it again. And, yeah. Okay. Um, I really loved it when Loney said about Angie, she's letting these bitches know, get your shit in order. <laughs> like, she fucking That's is. Business talk. Second yeah. win for Angie. So she's won 50% of the show so far. Love that for her. And mm. do you know who else also won first week and third week? No, who? sorry, second week and fourth week. Simone. Well, there you go. It seems legacy to me. Oh, God, um, I love you so much. Should we go into the lip sync? I guess so. Well, yeah, so, yeah. Kerry and Alyssa are in the bottom. Honeys. Two hun- honey on honey violence. Mm. Um, so do we think that this is a borrowed dress for Kerry Colby? Because she was like, mm, can't fuck up this dress. Do we think it's like bo- someone was like, Kerry, if you're doing J-Lo, you know I've got J-Lo's dress. Or do we think it's like rented, like she's rented it from like a company or something? Do we think it's a friend or like she's gone into uh, someone's atelier? I would think like a, a friend of a friend of a friend has been able to grab it for her. But first of all, J-Lo, play. What a fucking banger. What a fucking... Woo! Woo! Play my motherfucking song. I oh. was pacing so hard. And not just because I had 10 minutes to reach my hourly Fitbit goal. <laughs> and not just because you were probably on my <laughs> drugs. But I was honestly... When she said that, she's like, I don't think I'm going to be able to move in this. And then like watching Alyssa walk all around the thing like taking off hats shaking out her hair while Kerry's literally all Kerry could do was that model and give you a bit of a strut and I was scared and surprised at the outcome really but Kerry Colby was giving you something that only the divas know she was modeling through the finger let me talk to you about planes when your third plane is like out to the galaxy and when she was modelling with her hands, there was so much energy through the ends of her fingertips and that it, that's model that's modelling shit. She was like a... Sta- she was at, she's heaven. She's mm. ethereal. She's a goddess. And But she was doing a bit um, visual karaoke. Okay. Um, it's, it's a style of performance. It's yeah. mine. I was just worried. I can't, very I can't believe cock. that the money gun malfunctioning was the only reason Alyssa didn't win. Like, obviously... RuPaul's not going to let Kerry Colby go. I, I mean, could you? No, but that's like if it felt unfair. It felt like if this, as any, if Alyssa had been with anyone else, she would have won. If anyone knows the pain of money guns not working, it's truly your girls. I've literally we, said, yeah, yeah, like we in our in one of our shows, we have like a money gun thing and i would say 60 to 70 percent of the time they don't work you have to like rattle them like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you <laughs> can so see her doing like it as well it like. um can i tell you a little story have you got a second to talk about sisterhood Alyssa hunter borrowed that human unit that she wore in the lip sync from georgia's and also bosco lent her the heels that she was wearing because hers broke before the runway 
That is nice. So really, that's Alyssa, the house that Sisterhood built. Yeah. Which is very cute. In less Sisterhood, did you see Lady C in the background? Literally serving you nonch. Hands in pockets, just like, maybe that was just like, a bit where she was thinking about something but it just like cut to her I was like huh She's bored. you're really thinking about your shopping list aren't yeah. you um, just never rely on props it's so stressful as soon as anyone brings out a prop I'm like it's probably going to fuck up because mm. if there's any place it'll fuck up it'll be during the lip sync yep. I felt like it was a bit of a strange lip sync I, I I don't know there was like it, it, I, it, I felt like it never really got started yeah I think it's because we were so fearful for Kerry and then like just knowing that she couldn't really let loose yeah um but sad to say well yeah i'm really sad to see Alyssa go really sad but i couldn't have seen kerry go yeah yeah yeah. i couldn't i'm not i really feel like Alyssa was absolutely fucking gorgeous and she was gonna give us some great shit and i'm Mm. just sad um i think at this point like that i don't really want to see many people go so who would you like to see go next uh people that aren't really tickling the spot for me orion i'm not really mm-hmm. that, that bothered by um deja i'm not really that bothered by um so i could have definitely seen them two go home before Alyssa. Mm. um speaking uh, of orion apparently yeah. at a viewing party they said that the chocolate is plastic is that why no one's taken a bite of it i thought the first thing i'd do just like stick it all in i guess so. well the, i mean the real question is do we believe that that's tricks and stunts or do we believe that that's real life because I, if i knew there was tricks and stunts and i'd given it back to because also um i saw on twitter someone had said notice how they wrote on the paper which can easily be removed so they were like any they signed the paper didn't they yeah, and surely it's just like a, a flap that gets sealed at one end so you can just reseal it and put a exactly. different chocolate bar in. The it, whole thing is very, very So wouldn't that wind you suspicious. up so much? So much that you'd be like, I don't even give a fuck about this chocolate because like, if they wanted me to stay, then I'll stay, but I'm not that girl. Yeah, it all just feels a bit gross. Yeah. Not Do you know it. what I love? PR girls have so much pride. No I one thought ha- you meant like public relations girls. Yeah, yeah. Samantha Jones <laughs> PR girls. No, like they have so much motherfucking pride. Like... Always, as soon as she pulled that flag out, I was like, okay, bitch. Like, um, they just always, like, they fucking rep their country. And Anyone who's proud of their country that isn't from the UK or America, I stand with you so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I would die for how much Bretman Rock, like, loves I would Hawaii. just die for him. I mean, yeah, literally. But, like, um, he goes so hard for Hawaii and also the Philippines. Mm. And I'm just like, I love you. Just, I love you. Just yeah. rock. Just in general. Um, Let it be known. Uh, let's talk Rose and Thorn. You say yours because I didn't do any. Oh, <laughs> there was no highlights. Just one plateau. No, um, my rose was the six second clip of Kerry Colby holding the edges of her dress and walking forward in the lip sync. Mm. I thought that is gorgeous. Yeah. Because it was what Jayla always does. Obviously, it's runway. designed that way, but... Heaven. When you get a bit of a walk in it and the and wind is just picking up those flaps. Yeah. The wind beneath the Absolutely wings. Absolutely fucking gorgeous. My thorn was that J-Lo wasn't a guest. Yeah. I want to hear her critique the outfits. I want the little backstage kicky, 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 kicky. Of, yeah, like, I want her to, to be to like them. sobbing on the runway. I want them to see her up close and be like, wow, perfection. Maybe that's Heaven. why, because she's like, I've, they're not giving me that RuPaul light and I ain't coming in. But I just don't give her a night of a thousand then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If she can't turn up, then... Um, but maybe that was for the best because also, may- I don't know, she's dating Ben Affleck now, like famed uh, brother of a sexual assault prick. Maybe he's he rubbing off on her. was a brother it? of a sexual prick. Yeah. Um, but next week, next the comeback week. of Tempest du Jour, Kimora Hill and our baby James Mansfield. How gorgeous and cute to James Mansfield look. And I thought, is James Mansfield maybe um, a fish Latina really nice to meet you? I think so. Yeah, oh, re- really? Mm-hmm. I just, James Mansfield is just the most boring white name ever. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, uh, but she looks so gorgeous and so cute. And also, I love Kamora Hall. I think they're the cutest little thing in the world. Did you see the very quick preview of Kerry Colby's kind of floral fantasy runway look? You're damn fucking right I did. I squealed Uh, at the screen. Same. Just heaven. It looks like next week is going to be a really fucking good episode. But I really enjoyed this one, actually. I thought this was a great episode. It was nice to have like a a proper episode again. I feel like the first three was a bit rushed and manic. I just need more Angie, more Willow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see you next week then, gals. Uh, one last thing. Go on. Tell us. Let me tell you something, you ugly bitch. Bye. <laughs>